Hey, Dave Lacalli with Head Games Motorworks, and today we're going to talk about Gen 1 and Gen 2 Coyote Part Selection. I think that it's pretty common for people to just assume that because it's for a Gen 2 Coyote or a Gen 1 Coyote that everything fits. You don't have to worry about anything because somebody makes it for my car. And you bring all these parts, you bring all this valve train, and you think that you're getting an upgrade without all the background knowledge of what works and what does not. It might sound one-sided, which I'm not, but I'm just gonna show you the data and let you decide for yourself. We're also gonna go over some other stuff because the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Coyotes, valve train wise, I would say that there's a uh, there's been parts that are have been supplied for many years and don't get me wrong they're not failure prone so much and but we can also talk why they're not so failure prone and uh, we're going to talk valve sizing why do we go to a certain valve size versus another uh, all that is going to be covered today so keep watching all right guys so let's go over what an issue i saw right away now here is the 45 on the exhaust. Now you'll see that there, there's actually a pretty decent top cut above that. And that's what you really want to see because a valve seat's like a heat sink. And if you take away the heat sink, there's going to be problems getting rid of that heat and you're going to have valve train issues, bent valves and whatnot. And then I noticed that the 45 on the intake is right there. And you'll notice that it's on the aluminum pretty much. And this is because it's an oversized valve. This I would say is a no-no. It's literally on the aluminum. It's only 20 thousandths wide 45. It's on the aluminum. I don't see why there is an advantage to doing such a thing. We're not doing that. So if you compare that to an OEM, this is an OEM valve seat. Here's the 45 here. So you'll see here that the 45, just a little sliver of top cut. And that's why in these cylinder heads, you really should not be trying to use an oversized valve because it's really on the edge right from OEM. So why would somebody put an oversized valve in this? Uh, I mean, a lot of people do this. They think that bigger is better. It's going to... I don't actually know why. I don't know why. Why you would uh, choose a valve size over a longevity or what have you. They used an oversized valve and that is not only going to hurt because you're going to put the 45 on the aluminum, but it's also going to hurt airflow because you can't get a good valve job on, like you're not going to be able to put a top cut. You have now opened up the throat and does it really make it better or is it just making it bigger? And I think that in this case is just making it bigger. It's not at all making it better. But Dave, they don't have valve train issues. I call bullshit on that because uh, this head had a bunch of bent valves and I think the valves were bent because valve float would be one of them. And it would also be because of heat. You can't get the heat out of it and you're floating because you use a valve spring that is not up to par per se. Um, and you get some bent stuff. The reason why they don't come apart, triple groove. Let's dive into that. Triple groove is a one, two, three triple groove valve lock. And this is what will help the retainer not come off. And that's the biggest attribute to a Ford not coming apart. Comparatively speaking, a single groove. Reason why you see a lot of Hondas coming apart is because they have a single groove and that single groove will come apart. It'll drop a valve very, very quickly. And that is why you never hear about the BMWs or the Coyotes falling apart because it's not going to come apart. It will beat itself to death before it comes apart. At the root of these failures, it's actually the valve spring that is just never up to par. So you guys want to just reuse some parts and you think that, you know, you can go cheap on the valve spring and you can run what everybody else is running. But the truth is, that just because, again, just because it hasn't come apart does not mean that it's right. I, I think that a lot of the chain issues that you see are camshaft and valve spring related. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into that. We are going to get to that eventually, but not in this video. But we are going to get to that. What we can do 
Let's talk about valve springs. We're gonna stick all of these springs in our spring tester. This is the OEM 2012-2013 Coyote spring. And this is the Boss 302 spring. We have the Pack 1234X and we have the new GSC conical. So we're gonna do the GT, the 1234X and the Boss all at 1575 and we have 511 lift. So let's start testing. First up, we're gonna do the GT head, if it plays nice to me. There we go. 56 pounds on the seat, 157 open, 46 thousandths to coil bind, and we have a spring rate of 197. Second valve spring, we're gonna do the Boss 302. So we are 65 pounds on the seat, 171 open, 25 thousandths away from cool bind, with a spring rate of 208. Third spring we're gonna do is the 1234X. It installs with the factory retainer, so we're just gonna leave it like that. And we are 123 on the seat, 281 open, 114 thousandths away from cool bind, with a spring rate of 308. Now for the last one, I have to change the install height because we're at 1536. This is the GSC Power Division new conical spring. We're gonna get into spring shapes in a second here, but let's open this guy up. And we are 118 on the seat, 286 open, 107 thousandths away from coil bind with a spring rate of 329. These springs might look the same, but they're actually completely different. You notice that this spring is the conical, this spring is a beehive. Now it's been my experience that the beehive, I just really can't get them to behave. And we switched over to conicals, GSC Power Division came out with these things and they have been a game changer for every four valve that we work on. So basically what I'm saying guys is that now that we went over the valve spring pressure, we went over why they don't come apart. I think that if you're making under seven, 800, yeah, maybe the valves, may, you're not running that much boost in a Coyote. So yes, is it possible to reuse the OEM spring, spring kit? Yes, but if you want that cushion for the pushing, there's options for you. You can do the, the pack spring. You, they make drop-in springs or you can buy the, the GSC spring. Do you guys need a hundred and something on the seat? No, but it's certainly not gonna hurt you. It would hurt you. A lot of people think that if you run too much spring pressure, it's gonna wear parts. The truth is that not enough spring pressure creates way more issues, more wear than it does having too much. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us today. I appreciate you watching if you've watched this far and be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, tell me what you wanna see. Games!